one mic. I need this one mic. It's just different. One mic with Big Mike. The overall tenor of, of what he's saying is very stupid. And they say his style is too urban for the radio. Maybe it's not racism. Maybe it's placism. Brother has to know his place. Right, Bob? One mic with Big Mike. Things aren't always what they seem. A sports talk show. But no subject matter is off limit. Don't just tell me that the reason something's being done is because that's the way it's always been done. Because the first thing I'm going to say to you is slavery. And now, your host. I got the big homie here who needs no introduction. Big Mike. Mike, 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 Mike. All I need is one mic. What up, what up, what up? Welcome into a hump day edition of the One Mike with Big Mike show. Here live on Spreaker.com. That is S P R E A K E R.com. Spreaker also has an app for all your mobile devices, so make sure you head on over to your app store and download that. You can also hear the show live on TuneIn and, of course, the website One Mike with Big Mike.com. If you want to get involved with the show, it's quite easy. Just text me at 404 902 8104. You can also jump inside my live interactive chat room by clicking the little thought bubble icon you see on the streaming streaming player if you don't see it that means you're not listening to the show via spreaker you got to go to spreaker or my website one mic with big mike.com click that little thought bubble icon and boom you'll be right in the building uh third option you guys can check out the live streaming video here on facebook my Facebook page is at the number one M I C W I T H B I G M I K E, and leave all your comments and questions below the video. Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the same handle, One Mike with Big Mike. All right, so today Hump Day It's also uh, Woman Crush Wednesday as well here on the One Mike with Big Mike show. And real quick, shout out to at ish dot com with two M's ish dot c o m m. She is today's. Or this week's Woman Crush Wednesday. Um, as far as today's show goes, I got to, you know, it's that time of year, man. You got to be creative, right? So I'm going to talk about this free agency stuff that's going on in the NFL. Uh, Dirk Nowitzki doing big things. 30,000 points, one of six in, in NBA history to do that. So I'll talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, my man Joe Mixon. I'll say my man and Joe Mixon since nobody else won't claim him. I, I'll do it. Had his pro day today, feel me? And, um... Yeah, <laughs> the youngster did work, man. He, he did some some quality work, but there's still some questions about uh, him coming into this this upcoming draft or going into this upcoming draft. Um, also, shout out to the women. I guess like I'm confused. It's like so many things going on. Uh, Women's History Month, right? That's a thing. International Women's Day is, I guess, today. And also, it's, today is the day without women. Like a bunch of brides didn't go to work today. My old lady went to work today. And uh, she's here today, so I don't know if if the day without women applies to me because I have my woman here. You know, she went to work this morning. All those things happen normally, so I didn't do a lot of reading on this whole situation. So, um, the other day we had a couple ladies checking this out, checking the show out on Facebook, and I hope they come back today because I, I've got questions because I didn't do any <laughs> in all the reading I did today. I didn't do any on on International Women's Day or Day Without Women's Day. Or not women. Day without women day? Eh, women's? Which one is it? Either way. I mean, if you guys listen to the show, you know how, how I feel about holidays. They're ridiculous and they're stupid. All of them. You know what I mean? Like, some I'll give a pass to. But for the most part, like, whatever, man. Like, women's month? If you want to know more about women, do some read. You know what I mean? Appreciate your woman every day. It's whatever. Stupid. Uh, so... I even got some soccer news into the show today. Yeah, right here in the ATL, we got a soccer team here. That's pretty That's pretty ill. Also, Nike got some new gear. Excuse me, they're about to put out some new gear. Um, but only for a select crowd. And I'll, I'll, I'll get you guys caught up on that as well. After the show, man, 10 o'clock, an hour after the show is done, I mean. Um, WGN, the, the, the season two premiere of Underground. I don't know how many of you guys and girls are into that joint, but that that's one of my licks that I like to... I like to uh, partake in so that's coming up tonight um let's see what else we got yeah that's pretty much it man yeah so what i want to start off with i want to start off with quickly the big the, one of the big things today with dirk nowitzki dirk, dirk nowitzki dallas dallas forward dallas mavericks forward for like the last what 19 years uh he reached a milestone last night thirty thousand points and you know i don't know what to say about that i mean it's cool it's cool i understand 
you know, that puts him into some rarefied air with Michael Jordan and Kareem and Carl Malone and Wilt and them cats. But even more, even more than that, you know, people talk about his impact on the game. Like now, because you're talking about a person, like I saw Charles Barkley, they, they show some clips of Charles Barkley telling a story about him wearing a Dirk Nowitzki jersey and all this kind of stuff. But I say, hold up, hold the hell up. Because this is the same dude that's always calling the game soft and these, these guys today, the game, the game, game is too soft and all this kind of stuff, right? But if you, you jump into your DeLorean and go back in time, the reason for that, that moniker, not saying, I'm definitely not saying it's right or correct. But the reason that moniker exists is because of the changes that a guy like Dirk Nowitzki brought to the game. Like, because when he came in, you remember, he got traded to Dallas from Milwaukee, wasn't it? I think it was Milwaukee for the University of Michigan's uh, Robert Tractor Trailer. Shout out to Tractor Trailer. I don't know if you guys remember a couple years ago, he got found, he found, was found in his hotel room in Puerto Rico playing some Puerto Rican League ba- basketball, dead. So, yeah, he's no longer with us. So, I would say the Mavericks officially, <laughs> they officially won that. They uh won that trade. <laughs> uh, anyway, I know I'm a bad guy. Whatever, he's dead. He don't care. Um. So yeah, when Dirk came in, he was this this gangly German kid. You know the 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 um the word out of the word was out that European basketball was soft basketball. But then this dude came in as a seven footer with a feathery touch. And, and like crazy basketball skills, and it, what it did, it changed what was an era of if you were that guy, you had to be a banger. You had to be a low post guy on the block, shooting, running hook shots, and dunking on people, and all that. It changed the whole dynamic of what it meant to be a big. Because in, in today's in, now, like Christoph Porzingis is seven foot three. Feel me? And he's got the game of a guard. Kevin Durant, he remixed the whole thing. He took the shot. He took the handles, the athleticism, and added all that stuff to, to Dirk's game. And you, and it came out as Kevin Durant. So for, for whatever whatever people think and feel about Dirk Nowitzki or people all day today, like the stuff that I hate that makes me want to just like rip my eyelids off, you know, like where does he rank? All time in the NBA. And then people start like having like these fake debates about it. Well, I mean, is he, is he over Larry Bird? Or wait, would you put him over Carl Malone? What about under? Like, whatever, man. Like, he's great. And it's, at a certain point, man, you can't keep telling me that every, like, all these great players are top five players. That's stupid because the league continues to move on. You know what I mean? Like, we're we talking about all time great players that are in the league now. That are probably all time greats. You show me a better ball handling shooter in the history of the game than Steph Curry with range. You know what I'm saying? You show me the LeBron at any time in NBA history. You show me the Kevin Durant at any time in NBA history. And that's three right there. So that whole nonsense about like, where do you rank so and so? You're idiots. Stop it immediately. So, yeah, big up to Dirk. He said he still want to play one more year, though. So that's good for him, I guess. You know, Mark Cuban got to pay him again. You know, I can't. Mark Cuban can't wait for this dude to retire, man, because that whole narrative of being being loyal to somebody, like he's stuck with it and he's sunk in there. You can't, like, you can't ship Dirk Nowitzki off nowhere. Nah, <laughs> he's he cemented now. This ain't a situation because, like, with Dwayne Wade, people know Pat Riley don't give a damn. You know what I mean? But Mark Cuban is that he's that he's that fun teacher. You know what I mean? He's the teacher that who class everybody want to go to and whatnot. You can't just he can't just break ties with Dirk Nowitzki, even though he's getting old and he's broken down. And that shot ain't the same as it was. I mean, it's still form, formatically, it's still good. Another one of my words, formatically. But yeah, he's not the same player. He's not championship. MVP. I just remember the day that he got that he had an MVP, and it was during that time around with the Steve Nash stuff was going on. Where like they was just giving out MVPs to white boys, right, <laughs> right and left, right. It was like, yeah, are you white? Pretty decent MVP for you. Let's go. Screw Kobe. Yeah, Kobe man. Kobe got he got hit with that rape case at the wrong time or that before. 
for argument's sake, I'll say it was after. Anyway, what up to Reggie, man? Reggie is um, going to be helping me produce the show here. Him and uh, him and Marcus. Y'all ain't even seen Marcus yet. Marcus, Marcus stepped in the room like one time the other day and was just been gone. That dude been texting me all day these these wacky <laughs> these wacky sports radio topics, and I didn't even know what the hell it was until he t- told me what it was. Um, I'll read some to you guys here a little bit later. And my man, I am no doze up in here. Ridiculous human being <laughs> he is. <laughs> um so yeah, that's the whole dirt thing. But um the main thing I want to talk about today, and I know it feels like I'm beating, you know, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse, but it keeps coming back to mind. It keeps coming back like in my face. It's Joe Mixon situation. And it's not really a dated conversation because the fact that the kid finally sat now with with some uh, execs today, one I am no those being the the Saints. I'll ask you. You know, you're a Saints fan. Joe Mixon to the Saints? What what you feel about that? They now I, I I hate when people do that. They just say Joe Mixon to the Saints and you know tell you give you any auxiliary information. Let's say they get Joe Mixon fourth round. Saints Saints got a fourth round pick. They got a need for the running backs. And they're one of the teams that actually wanted to speak to the kid uh, at his pro day. How you feel about them picking a the guy like Joe Mixon for a uh, four four three? Some people had him uh, clocked at today. Jumped out the gym. You know what I'm saying? So. uh talented as hell he got a crazy like makeup though like like when you see the dude like neck up he looks like a small guy you know he got like a he got like a baby head like a fetus head <laughs> you know what i mean like a little head but then you like you you see him today working out this dude is like 228 230 pounds man he's like a thick kid man so you know it's it's it's, it's crazy and that i mean that's just my crazy observation but i find today like so many like people injecting these false morals into the situation when it comes to him let, let, let's take you guys back for those of you who don't know joe mixon is the kid from oklahoma the running back from oklahoma who two years ago as a freshman at oklahoma uh got into a a, a situation in a, i think it was a coffee house in which uh he, he punched a young lady and i believe broke her jaw or broke her orbital bone or something other than, of that uh nature in which he was suspended or he was not allowed to participate with the team for a year. Uh, they, they got him. He got a chance to plea down or plea down to like a misdemeanor or something like that and do some community service or whatnot. And then he showed up at the bowl game the following year was the first time the media got a hold of him. They tried to like just go in on him. You know, Joe, why are you here? How do you feel you used to be here? Are you sorry? And this, that, and the other. And, you know, he was on some defensive stuff. And then fast forward another year. You know, to another bowl game, and the same thing came up again. And now we're on to the process of him becoming a professional athlete, and the NFL decided they weren't going to let him come to the damn combine. All right, fine and good, whatever. You know, that's that's their prerogative, as though he wasn't going to have a pro day, <laughs> which was today. And um, watching ESPN today, I, I heard something that was just like, it was so ridiculous, man. It was from somebody who I, I sometimes can can – can bear listening to Herm Edwards was on some like he wouldn't be on my team. And I was like, all right, I can like that's whatever. You know, however you want to spin that. But then he went into this whole like overly moral type thing. Like it depends on who the type the type of man you are. But of course I am no dose is not that kind of man. He he says F yeah he like Joe Mixon on the Saints. <laughs> and you know what? He is like that answer is indicative of a fan. You don't care. You don't care about, uh, what's that kid, Frank Clark? People said it sounded like he was killing that girl in, in that hotel room. Seattle Seahawks drafting him, no problem, because you know what? He can get after a damn passer. Tyreek Hill, he runs very, very fast. No one cares about that other stuff. And I don't think, I don't think Herm Edwards cares. That whole thing about I got to go home and listen to my daughters ask me why I drafted this guy, because it's football. And that's what keeps you in these damn private schools. Like, one thing doesn't have any bearing on the other one. Doing your job doesn't have any bearing on whether or not you think it's right for a dude to punch a girl in the mouth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, to, to draw that conclusion and to just equate those two things is fundamentally ignorant and stupid. But it makes people feel better about who they are. You know what I mean? It makes people feel better, like, I'm a good guy. No, you're not. Because if you was a good guy, you wouldn't have you would have the same attitude towards the drug addicts on the team. 
you would have the same attitude towards the adulterers on the team. You would have the same attitude towards all them. If you was if you was sitting so high on your moral horse, but you draw the line at some place. Get your ass out of here, man. At the end of the day, man, talent is a is a is pe- people give talent as a reason for forgiveness. A couple years ago, man, Chris Chris Brown beat that girl up in that car. And, and they start taking his music off the shelves at Walmart and radio stations were irate. We're never, ever playing Chris Brown's music again. You know what Chris Brown is? He's talented as hell. <laughs> you know what I mean? And eventually, the talent was going to allow you to feel good about forgetting that he beat that girl up. Mm-hmm. No one cares, though, do they? <laughs> like, ain't nobody going to bring that up. I mean, it's not our call. It's the program director. <laughs> Shut your ass up. <laughs> UV, when, he, when that song come on and Chris Brown is on, like, when I take my shower, I'm going to let y'all in on something. Let you behind the curtain. <laughs> when, I, when I take my shower, I got the Bluetooth situation in the, in, the, in the shower, right? So I put on the Pandora. And, dude, probably the, the, the hip-hop and R&B channel on Pandora, like every other song has Chris Brown on the hook. That's not by accident, man. That's not by accident. He's talented as hell. And you you start talking about the situation with him and Rihanna in the sense of, you remember that time? Like, it was like 50 years ago. (laughs) It was like four or five years ago, man. Let's check in in the chat room real quick. You guys can join the chat room if you'd like. Just go to uh, Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R dot com, and I'll leave your comments below the live stream. Or excuse me. Nope. Just click on the little thought bubble icon. And uh, I told you guys, I don't listen to the show. The words just come out. Click on the little thought bubble icon. It'll get you inside the live interactive chat room. where You guys can join this conversation that I'm having right now. Uh, my man, I am no dose saying as long as he can take a lick and don't be scared to run again. <laughs> See, Reggie Bush wasn't scared. Um, then he'd fit great on the team. Yeah. All you want, I mean, as a fan, as a executive, you want production because as a, especially as a coach and, a, and, as, a, and, a, and as an executive, those things translate to your job security. So, yeah, you don't you don't care what this dude what you care about is him being caught. You know, what I mean, like in the case of, of, of Herm Edwards, you don't care that this dude is beating on his woman. You care that other people care. And will say things to you. And will look at you in a bad light. That's what you care about. You don't care about that. That little white girl. If I ask Herm Edwards right now, what was that little girl's name? Because her name has been released plenty of times. She's testified and all kinds of stuff. If I ask anybody, what's that girl's name? You don't know, but you know Joe Mixon. You know him. So you don't care about her. You care about the perception of other people. Just like the NFL. They don't care about women being beaten up. They don't care about the players smoking weed. They don't care about player safety. It's all a PR, a whole PR wagon that they're riding in collectively. And we supposed to fall for it. Not me, man. Like, look, dude, can this dude ball? We're going to find out. He looked the part. I saw the clips from the pro day today. He looked the part. Saw him play um, him, Samaj P. Ryan, the other cat that played court, uh, excuse me, running back for Oklahoma. They had two good running backs. The thing that he did two years ago, that whole that dumbass excuse that people say, like, well, we, they, they want to find out if it's a pattern. Like, a lot of this stuff, man, is so coded, man. And I'm, I'm so tired of it, man, that that's the thing that has to happen when you're a young black man and you do something wrong. I'm not the dude that, that even says make a mistake because he didn't make a mistake and hit that girl. He hit her on purpose. You know what I'm saying? Like people always say it was a mistake. It was one of the biggest mistakes of my life. Nah, nah. Me walking into a door while you're walking out of it and hitting you with the door on accident, that's a mistake. He hit that girl on purpose. But if that decision is supposed to, if you're supposed to just be able to just brand him with that decision, that poor decision for the rest of his life, I mean, I'm just not cool with that. I'm not the dude that's going to call it fair or unfair because that's for other people to decide, but I'm not cool with it. You know what I'm saying? Because I do remember, I'll, I'll be 40 this month, but I do remember 19-year-old Mike. I remember 17-year-old Mike. I remember being that dumb kid. I remember being that impulsive kid. You know I mean, and then having to, you know, having to just grow out of. I, I did a show one time. I did this show a couple times, as a matter of fact, like the what if show. And we and I talked about different athletes. What if Kobe Bryant gets locked up 
after that night in that in that hotel room. You know what I'm saying? What if uh and I am I am know those. What if Drew Brees, what if Miami's not uh they're not worried about his shoulder and they sign him instead of Dante Culpepper? Like how are all these different stories written? Michael Irvin, what if he gotta go to jail from that cocaine and all that stuff that he got in trouble for back in the day? Michael Vick, what if he had never decided he was going to fight them dogs and put that effort into playing football or being a better football player? There's a lot of what-if players. Barry Sanders, there's nothing nefarious about Barry Sanders, but we all ask the question about Barry Sanders, don't we? What if Barry would have kept playing? What if he would have got his wishes because Barry wanted to be traded to the Chargers and Wayne Fonts and the and the, and the Lions were like, hell no, nah, we can't have you? Nobody can. Like on some abusive boyfriend with mess yeah <laughs> if we can't have you know why the can and barry was like all right i'm just gonna bounce then <laughs> holla at y'all later and i'm tired of this crap see it's all the, it's, it's the what if stuff so we can ask the what if question with joe mixon and people are gonna people are gonna have the what if question once he's drafted but yeah, here's a better question for you i am noto since you're since you're invested in this now <laughs> i've got you i've got you sucked in what is the what is an appropriate round and I know I'm probably asking the wrong person because he's a terrible human being like I am. <laughs> what would what do you think would be the appropriate round in this draft? And in case you don't know, the draft is full of running backs. You got uh, the kid from Tennessee. You got, of course, Leonard Fournette. You got Dalvin Cook. You got Christian McCaffrey. You got this kid, Joe Mixon, his running partner, Samaj P. Ryan. It's a bunch of running backs in this class, man. So with that being said, like morally, because that's what it boils down to. Like what what round can I draft this kid in that's gonna that's gonna bring me the least heat? Where somebody will say, Well, I mean, damn, fifth round, you gotta take the kid. Because people are talking like he shouldn't be drafted. Like people are actually saying that. Like he shouldn't even be drafted. And if that's the case, say that. Say to do the trouble. If that if that incident keeps him from making a living in the NFL, say that before the kid goes and busts his ass. And does all this all this hard work and and all this this crying on TV and this apology and all this kind of save that. If you just feel like he shouldn't be able to play in the NFL, say that and run it. Ride out with what with all your all your uh what would they call it? Um golly, what's the word that they use when you when you're not allowed to do anything anymore? Well we we won't take zero tolerance. But all your zero tolerance against against uh, domestic violence. The Lions GM said that last year. We will never have somebody on this team that does that. Oh, Joe Mixon ran a four four three. Well, you see, they should have let him come to the combine at least, so we could talk to him and find out what really happened. <laughs> yeah, you get a whole narrative changes when talent bring when talent rises to the forefront. You gotta take notice, man. You can't be that dude, and that's what that's gonna be the thinking. If we don't take him. Then what? If you take the kid from Tennessee and don't take Joe Mixon, the kid from Tennessee plays a year and he's out of the league. But Joe Mixon turns out to be, you know, rookie of the year. He he plays in a couple Pro Bowls. You know what I'm saying? That's the other look that people are taking. It's the One Mike with Big Mike show, man. I'm here at Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app. Tune in. And one mic with big dot com. Hey Reggie, when you get a chance, man, can you uh, log on to tune in and see if the show is live on tune in? I say it every day, but and they supposed to have it straight, but I haven't been able to check, obviously, because I'm doing what I'm doing here. Um also make sure you check out the live stream going on on Facebook right now. Why y'all ain't telling me the damn thing wasn't plugged up, man? Damn it, I'm just sitting here talking, got the video pumping, and ain't no audio going through this joint. God man people all right man let me plug this up man and get the audio popping gee whiz anyway back to the chat room real quick um trump was voted president of the united states for, <laughs> for effing america after admitting to sexual assault f these people my man i look i just can't i can't argue with that logic at all <laughs> like agent orange went around grabbing pussies and sitting and told people and everybody heard it and they was like you know what f that made a businessman the white house man put the emphasis on man can't vote for no damn broad uh you effing people i hate you so much it's not even funny man <laughs> i hate people so much man because now all of us all of us are just left to deal with it you know what i mean 
Um, he also says, I am Nodos also says, using your logic of not drafting a, a running back in the first, first and second, in the first, then, oh, so you think Joe Mixon is a second round pick? Okay, using my logic, using my logic, Joe Mixon's a good, he's a good old fashioned fourth or fifth because I ain't taking, I ain't taking Leonard Fournette to the, to the second, <laughs> the best running back in the draft. Hell, I ain't taking his ass to the second. <laughs> well, I also saw a mock draft today. I need to look at it closer, but uh, I saw the headline saying that, um, Apparently something happened, <laughs> you know, a game was played and we all missed it. And now Leonard Fournette is, uh, he's dropped to 21st in the first round. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine Len- Leonard Fournette lasting to the twenty to the 21st pick, which also, let me say this. If he does, if he makes it past Carolina early and, and gets all the way to 21st, good for him. He might lose a little bit of money up front, but he'd be on a better team. And that's what you want, man, Coming, especially as a running back coming out. You want to be on a better team. You don't. You don't want that Ty Gurley stuff in you, man. You don't even want to mess with that at all. Feel me? Um, how much time I got here? I got like four minutes. So, um, make sure I said everything I need to say about this Joe Mixon situation. Yeah, it's just to me. It's just like the the adulterous hypocrisy. You know what I mean? That this kid, he what he did was so deplorable. Okay, we get it, man. We get it. You know what I mean? We understand how you feel about it because that's the thing too. Everybody's got a, everybody's in this competition to show just how much they're against him him punching a woman. This is why I don't understand. Like I don't understand like this whole women's what is it? What did I say it was International Women's Day, and then like all these commercials that are out this month about you know I think Serena has one that says strength doesn't equal gender. Well, I'll say the opposite. Neither does weakness. Like, if that's what we're talking about, like, be specific, B, because if we're talking about equality all the way across, women want to be equality. I, I can do everything a man can do. Well, Joe Mixon tried it out. Can you take a punch, too? Of course not. Like, this whole notion that that things can be, like, equal, like, especially gender, across gender. No. Like, it's about to get warm outside. You know what I'm going to do when it get warm? Go outside and cut my grass. You know who's not going to be out there cutting my grass? My woman. And she's okay with that. I'm okay with that. That ain't like, look, man, we got to do this. We got to be equal. 50-50 partners. I'll cut the front. You cut the back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or I'll cut it, but you grab that weed whacker. No. There are certain things that are just, that are just, that, that survive imbalanced or out of balance. And it's okay. You know what I mean? But like, don't, don't be like the pillar of strength and I can be everything a man can be on one term. And then play the, oh, my God, someone please defend me on the other on the other side. Don't do that. You know what I mean? Because I'll say it again. Your ovaries, your lady parts, it don't give you it don't give you a green a green light to put your hands on me either. The golden rule to me is from 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 kindergarten. We all got it. Keep your damn hands to yourself. Everybody just do that. Keep your hands to yourself. Yeah, worry about it. Well, I ain't say you got to worry about because there's some of these dudes out here that's on that ridiculousness and, you know, they like to do that, that wild, you know, beating on women and all that kind of stuff. Mm, had that. But I'm saying for the most part, when it comes to like a one off altercation, just keep your hands to yourself. Be as mad as you want to be and and loud as you want to be. Everybody just be adult. Get mad. Keep your hands to yourself. And like somebody like Joe Mixon. I say it again. He probably won't be in this situation because I don't feel like, and I can think that I can comfortably feel as though every person with any type of realistic logic can say that he didn't walk into that restaurant or coffee shop or whatever with 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 hitting this woman on his mind. Just don't think so, man. Anyway, let's take a break. I don't know if I mentioned no guests tonight. Oh, my damn my damn website went down. Which my email went down with it. I'm getting all these bounce backs of these emails I'm sending to these guests back and forth from these guests thinking something's going on. These people done took my money and then shut my website down. I had to get on the, had to email them and get them to realize the mistake. I'm like, bruh, like I'm the dude that can't stand paying for like piss poor service, man, especially something this important. So no guests tonight. I'm blaming it on sitebuilder.com. That's what I'm blaming it on. So anyway, we'll take a break. Come back. We'll do on this day. I want to talk to you guys some of these uh, free agency moves that have gone on 
today. I got some stuff out of the NCAA as well. And there's a such thing as a smart condom. <laughs> I'll talk about it next, man. It is the One Mike with Big Mike show here live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Spreaker. We're doing it for a hump day. Well, I have one question for you. Do you or someone you know run a business that could benefit from additional exposure? The One Mike with Big Mike show is currently taking on new sponsors and advertisers. One Mike with Big Mike is currently syndicated across eight different online platforms. And your company's name could be heard and seen across all eight as well. Let's get to work. Please send all inquiries to Mike at OneMikeWithBigMike.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your continued support. In the U.S., about 90 people die in motor vehicle crashes each day. And thousands more are injured, resulting in hundreds of millions of dollars in direct medical costs each year. One in three crash deaths involves drunk driving. Almost one in three involves speeding. And half of those who died were not buckled up. Even though we've made progress in the U.S., other high-income countries have lower motor vehicle crash death rates. We can and must do better. Here's what you can do. Use a seatbelt in every seat, on every trip, no matter how short. Make sure children are always properly buckled in the back seat, in a car seat, booster seat, or seatbelt, whichever is appropriate for their age, height, and weight. Never drive while impaired by alcohol or drugs, and help others do the same. Obey speed limits, and drive without distractions. To learn more, visit cdc.gov slash vital signs. And now, 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 back to one mic. What are we waiting for? Let's get to it. With Big Mike. Hump Day! Welcome back to the Wednesday edition, a.k.a. the Hump Day edition of the One Mike with Big Mike show. I'm sitting looking at my, um, looking at my Facebook, and I posted this article um, that Nike is set to manufacture... Uh, sports hijabs is that the correct, correct pronunciation the head the head pieces for the uh, Muslim women yeah Nike is uh is about to rock them they got a, a young lady who is uh what is she she's a speed skater a Muslim speed skater she, so she's already been wearing them but it almost just looks like the same stuff somebody somebody um who this Corey Stewart here on my Facebook says that we're supposed to forget about the Marion Jones Nike tracksuit. Yeah, because she had like the hoodie situation too. But I guess maybe this is different. I don't know the difference. Well, I, I'm looking at it. I guess it's more cloth. It's not like a, 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 a spandex material that you put on your head with one of those like full body hoodies like the uh, like the speed skaters. It's a, it's a different type of uh, different type of situation, I guess. But yeah, man, Nike figured it out. Yeah, that Muslim money spent just like everybody else's money. Got got your man Agent Orange around here talking about got got terrorism and all this kind of stuff and Muslim bans. Nike's like, ban what? <laughs> Let's get this money. Please believe it. Yeah, man. Um, let me give you guys the story real quick before I um head to on this day. Figure skater, Zara Lowry, L A R I of the United Arab Emirates, already wears the hijab. Uh she said, I was thrilled. And a bit emotional to see Nike prototyping a hijab. I've tried so many different ty- hijabs for performance. And uh, so a few of them actually work for me. But once I put it on and took it for a spin on the ice, I was blown away uh, by the by the fit and the lightweight. So I guess, yeah, it's like, damn, it's like performance based. You get like a performance based religious piece. Shout out to Nike for that, man. You know, they ain't they ain't just about sweat sweatshops. <laughs> they 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 looking out for the for the Muslim athletes. So shout out to them for that, I guess. Anyway, it's time to take a look back. Now, now, now. let's take a look back. <laughs> day on this day. <laughs> You're an idiot. Yeah, yeah. They voted in Trump. Yeah, so y'all voted in Trump, but y'all can't. <laughs> Y'all can't let, let, let the homie Joe Mixon play some NFL football? Effing hypocrites. <laughs> um, on this day in 1930, Herbert, Babe Ruth, his name was Herbert, wasn't it? He signed a two-year, $160,000 contract with the Yankees. New York GM Ed Barrow wrongly predicts, <laughs> quote, no one will ever be paid more than Ruth. 
Yeah, it's dude that is cashing them checks every two weeks, 160 grand. Because uh, when told he was making more money than the president, Herbert Hoover, Ruth responds, quote, I had a better year. <laughs> uh, what a racist jerk, too. <laughs> uh, on this day in 1954, the Milwaukee Hawks and Baltimore Bullets play in the first doubleheader in NBA history. Damn, two basketball games? Yeah, they quickly let that go. Le- LeBron them can't even play back to back days. What about a back to back shoot. On this day in 1971, smoking Joe Frazier beat the GOAT Muhammad Ali in 15 rounds. Damn it, man. To retain his heavyweight title. On this day in 1986, Martina Navratilova becomes the first woman tennis player to win more than 10 million in her career. I think Serena doing that every year at, at this point, ain't she? Serena's getting like 10 million a year. Shout out to Serena, by the way. She got an injury. So she had um she had to pull out of some tournament. I don't know. On this day in 1999, baseball legend Joe DiMaggio died. On this day in 2004, Todd Bertuzzi of the Vancouver Canucks delivers a cheap shot to Colorado Steve Mur- Moore. Hitting him in the head from behind and driving his head into the ice. I remember this, too. Moore suffered a broken neck, concussion, and facial lacerations. Criminal charges were filed against Bertuzzi. Moore never played again. Yeah, he almost killed that dude <laughs> in hockey. I don't say it, man. Like, hockey, hockey would never exist if Bruz played it. They wouldn't be the goon, all this goonery. Shoot. Also, you guys want to know who really invented hockey? Slaves. Uh, ex-slaves, ex-slaves invented hockey. There's a book called Black Ice. Go check it out. Uh, on this day in 2006, the Hornets. At this time of New Orleans fame and the Los Angeles Lakers played in New Orleans, the first sporting event held in the city since uh, Hurricane Katrina. On this day in 2008, Kevin Garnett scored his 20,000th point career point one day. And I don't know. What is that? How many years is that? Six, seven, six years. I don't know. That's more than six. That's nine. <laughs> nine years after nine years in a day. Uh, before Dirk Nowitzki scored his 30,000th point. By the way, LeBron's got 28,000 points. That dude is going to smash <laughs> all the record books. And uh, finally, on this day, it's not really sports related at all, uh, but I, I got a kick out of watching this happen on ESPN today. Today, uh, The notorious B.I.G. Christopher Wallace was gunned down in L.A. on this day in 2007, and they did a whole segment <laughs> Them Negroes did a whole segment segment on the six o'clock sports center on the notorious B.I.G. being killed. <laughs> and all I can think of in my mind is like white people are turning their televisions off right and left behind this, this foolishness here. <laughs> like ESPN a lost their damn mind. It was like <laughs> screw whitey. They don't put a whole like a, they didn't even just mention it. Cause that might have happened like if Stan Verrett or one of them cats was doing sports like the regular sports center. Yeah, hell no. They had a guest on and everything. Cat from the undefeated came on and like just talking about his relationship with Shaquille O'Neal. No, you kinda like kinda like act like he putting some sports in into it to like appease people. Nah, hell no. They was talking about old school hip hop, notorious B. I. G. being killed, the East Coast, West Coast battle. <laughs> Oh, white people everywhere throwing their damn remotes at the damn TV. <laughs> um, anyway, NFL free agency starts tomorrow in the National Football League. Um, and prior to that, you know, they have this this thing that they call like the legal tampering period or whatever it's called. It's weird. Um, couple guys on the move. The, the breaking this this is how slow of a news day it was today. The breaking news was that your man like uh, Brandon Marshall. Signed a two year, oh, the two years, sixteen million dollars, something like that contract. I don't know why I'm asking you guys. I have it right here, uh, or I thought I had it. Sorry. Well, whatever. Yeah, signed like a two year, sixteen million dollar deal with the uh, with the Giants, which is cool for him because you know what I'm saying he's gonna still be in the same vicinity, in the same place, playing at the same stadium. He can keep his gig with Showtime and whatnot. Although I guess per Adam Schefter. Uh, he's in a situation where they tape inside the NBA on a Tuesday and the the the, the um, Giants usually practice on Tuesday. So, yeah, they'll work it out. I'm sure that came up when they was 
when he was signing the papers or whatever. Uh, Vern Davis is back in the building, back, back on the block. I thought Vern Davis was going to freaking just recreate, reinvent tight ends, man. When I saw that dude at the Combine, that dude was running 4-4-4-3, four, 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 man, at a, t- as, at a tight end. I was like, this dude is about to change the game. Mm, not so much. <laughs> not so much at all. Um, Tyrod Taylor is going to be back with the Bills. Again, they gave him one of those. They gave him like a five-year extension, but it's really like like they did last year. It's one of those NFL five-year extensions where it's really like year to year for him. The team can get out of it at any time and just leave him like stuck, uh, high and stuck. I'm not sure what his part is. Like if he hasn't opted out as well, if he thinks he can get some more money on the open market. Not sure how that whole situation has worked out. Uh, there was a trade. Um, the kid from Clemson, the tight end from Clemson that played for the Colts, they traded him to uh, to New England, which means probably Martellus Bennett. Not probably. Martellus Bennett, who's a free agent, is going to have to find him somewhere else to play football next year. Uh, Tony Romo is going to get released tomorrow. That was another big thing that happened today. So Tony Romo's been released, and now everybody's replaying the uh, Peyton Manning scenario from a couple of years ago where he's going to kind of travel around and pick his team. People are saying the two front runners is going to be uh, Denver, whose offensive line. I mean, if you if you live here in the ATL, you know that offensive line was horrible. Like Vic Beasley made, he got to the Pro Bowl off that one game. I'll I'll I'll, I'll be the one to say that uh, he played well throughout the season, but that one game he was just wrecking havoc, wreaking or is it wrecking wreaking havoc, whatever on the that that uh that Broncos offensive line. Then there's Houston that they got their own set of issues. I mean, they got a good offensive line, they got a good defense, but they just paid a quarterback who can't really play NFL quarterback in Brock Osweiler. And to do that and then turn around and pay another quarterback, I mean, there's gonna have to be some money put on the table for him. You know what I mean? Uh sorry. Saw Facebook. I mean uh a, a text that is ridiculous as hell. Um <laughs> All right, wait a minute. So there's this thing going on here in in Atlanta. Um hashtag ATL orgy is happening. I don't know if, if you guys know about this. And this idiot, <laughs> my man uh, Rob Calloway, sends me a text. Uh, I guess, I don't know if it's a flyer or if it's like the rules to it or whatever. So uh, between Saturday, March 18th, was that this weekend? March 18th and Sunday, 319th is the ATL Orgy. The event is nothing like you've ever attended. I was going to just do a regular seven-hour party, but with, but that wasn't enough. This is my 27th birthday, an overnight event will, will encompass everything I love and adore great vibes good ratchet music amazing food and swinging balls <laughs> sex is allowed and nudity is 100 percent encouraged there will be no place where you will get the urge to get what there will be no place where you will get the urge to get frisky and can't what the hell is happening man <laughs> what what is going on <sighs> Hold on, man. This dude, we about to do something right now, dude. Because I got to figure out what this is, what's happening here. I've got to figure out what's happening here. Oh, it's more. There's a couple of them. All right, man. We're going to get my guy Callaway on the phone because we got to talk about this. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, free agency. I'm sorry. ATL or like, yeah. See, this is where it pays to be a grown man. Because there's going to be some folks out here getting like getting jammed up behind something like this. And guess who won't be one of them? This guy. Um, I talked about Brandon Marshall. You know, this is this is the time of the year also where people just get real comfortable fans and everybody get real comfortable counting everybody's money, count other people's money. And it makes me uncomfortable to do that. Like I was raised differently. I was raised not to talk about another man's money. Like Mike Glennon support, uh, purportedly is seeking something like $15 million. Mike Glenn, the backup quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Something like $15 million a year, and folks just lose name. Like, what the hell? $15 million. I'm like, I don't care. Get what you can get, cuz. You know, if you're not good, if you're not that good and somebody's still willing to pay you that money, how is that my problem? It damn sure ain't your problem. You, you want to come up. 
so that whole scenario, like this time of year, where people start talking about what this person is worth. Pierre, Gar- Pierre Garçon is now a San Francisco 49er uh, reuniting with his former offense coordinator from the Redskins. And apparently um, he got paid a good grip too, something like 16 million bucks or something like that. Um, the one thing I'm not a favor of, and you know, Adrian Peterson still, I don't know if I said talked about this the other day, but Adrian Peterson is supposedly ready to um, take less money to play for the Patriots. It's like, that's one of those things where you just kind of like put it out there because you know, you're going to have to anyway. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like no one's paying you top dollar. Cause I just read off or not read off. I just, just ran off. All these these ill running backs that's going to be in the league. Not to mention the Legarry Blunts that's younger than you. Uh, Doug Martin might be out there younger than you. Like, yeah, man, you, you're the last of a dying breed because you got you you damn right you're going to take a pay cut. It, whether it be with the Raiders or the Seahawks or whoever else, the, the Patriots, whoever else is, is reported to be interested in you, yeah, you're going to take a damn pay cut. That's like one of those dumb moments. But this whole idea of like, you know, paying players to be be coaches or babysitters or whatever, you gonna play and be a coach, hire him as a coach. That's a roster spot, cause like somebody who can't who can't contribute. And I'm not saying that about anybody so far this year, but the conversation was being had about Brandon Marshall. Like, like they they, they already started that foolishness about like pitting these two dudes against each other. Like, how are they gonna work that out? You know, these are two number one guys. Well, guess what? You don't just start one receiver. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how you solve that. You don't just solve one receiver. And apparently, Ben McAdoo loved the three the three receiver set. So everything will be fine. And Brandon Marshall knows where he's at. He did a commercial talking about uh, uh, how how Rod Rod Smith when he was in, when he was a rookie in Denver helped him out as an older player. He knows the role now. He got a couple more years to play. That dude's already laid the foundation for his post football playing career. He's good to go. But all this whole nonsense about, oh, my God, these two guys and Brandon Marshall is already not mentally stable. That's kind of ridiculous. And, and for, for a couple of different reasons, because this dude is has been very forthcoming that he deals with some sort of mental mental situation or mental illness. And he does the right things to keep himself in, in a good place. So for, for people like throw that out there, that's a bad guy move. Totally. You know, and then to try to like say like that makes him comparable with Odell Beckham Jr., is another like you can't go around like diagnosing people. You ain't trained for that. Saying because Brandon Marshall has his mental health issues, which he is taking care of and has taken care of, I man, maybe he can. Maybe you know it's gonna be a clash between him and Odell Beckham. Come on, man, it's too early for that. I know people want to make news and all this kind of stuff, but just talk about just talk about what's happening and how it's gonna work out on the football field. I know that's boring to people who refuse to become educated sports fans but screw them i don't believe in in pandering to idiots that's the problem with like that's ton listen to me <laughs> i hate when people say that and i almost said it that's one of the problems though like just period in a country and everywhere we pander to stupid people this is why like on those commercials don't try this at home because somebody stupid will try that at home and you got to protect yourself from stupid people who will try some something, something dangerous at their crib hurt themselves and then sue you for influencing them world is run by idiots man here's something that i found funny two things i found funny because now all of a sudden with adrian peterson you know now it's all about winning but what was it about before i've told people this for years adrian peterson is a jerk he's all he's a he's a for, all about me type dude and he's a jerk you know not no things aren't aren't, aren't don't run concurrent or what's the word I'm, yeah those things don't run concurrent they're separate things, but both in my mind true. There's a dude who had a baby, like a baby on the low. The kid dies. And this dude just cut a check. At first he was denying the baby till his daddy told on him. Like, nah, that's my grandson. He was denying it. I don't even know that's my kid. And his daddy was like, Yeah, you do. And I do too. And then gave us like my teammates need me didn't even go to the baby's funeral or any of that stuff like i'm not for all that funeral stuff and all that kind of stuff but like for this dude he run around hollering out being a man of god and all this kind of stuff yeah you dirty b you, you're stinking and you're filthy all together um the other thing i saw today that was kind of funny today and i was talking about this guy the other day bill polian 
he's on ESPN and he used to run the Bills and used to run the Colts. Went to a bunch of Super Bowls with the Bills, obviously won one with the Colts. And uh, my my guy says when the year Tom Brady was was uh, drafted, that dude said they had a first round grade on him. Like that's why that's what I'm always saying, man. Like just because you old, I don't have to listen to you and respect what you're saying. That's stupid. There's no way that that's true. And just because of that, I went and downloaded this drop so I can use it every time this happens. Well, we don't believe you. You need more people. Definitely does. He definitely needs more people. No one believes that. If you believe that, I got some beach land in Ellenwood to sell you, man. Let me read you what, what your man says because he's smarter than everybody else in the world, apparently. Same dude that said, just cut Andrew Luck a blank check. He was sitting down with Sports Illustrated. And he was uh, he was asked to name the quarterbacks that he would have drafted if Peyton Manning weren't on the roster. Quote, Tom Brady would have been a guy and we were very high on him. Our guys really loved him, but we weren't in the quarterback market, obviously. That would be the guy. Those would be the guys I remember. He named some other guys. He mentioned Roethlisberger and, and Rodgers, too. I remember us giving a solid first round can lead you to a championship grade. Wait a damn minute. How? How, B? How you how you let five, six rounds go by? And all of a sudden, now that the dude is a Hall of Famer, probably the best ever in ever. How you let that go by? <laughs> and 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 now all of a sudden, like, yeah, we had a first round grade on them. Like, if if even if you're not in the quarterback, you're not in the quarterback business or whatever, you're not looking for a quarterback. If you got a first round dude at any position, and you don't have like the character stuff and all this kind of stuff, red flags that people talk about. If you don't have that stuff, you draft him. Do you not? Am, am I missing something? You draft him because at the end of the day. If you don't have anything else, you have a commodity. You have something that everyone else missed on. You have your, your let's call him your Jimmy Garoppolo. That when you need more, you take that. You don't sit there with, with Mark Rippon at 49 years old as your backup quarterback. Hell no. You got a first round grade on Tom Brady, draft him. But now 20 years later when you didn't, we supposed to believe you? Well, we don't believe you. You need more people. Absolutely. There ain't that many people in the world, man, at all. I just hit my guy Callaway up because we got to talk about this ATL orgy thing. Apparently he knows about it. <laughs> I got Now I'm curious. I saw the hashtag was trending like a mud on, on, uh, on Twitter. And before I got a chance to read it or whatever and figure out what was going on, my man Matt, he, he spoke on it. And I'm sitting here like, word, this not this can't be a real thing. It can't be. So I'm gonna see if, if Callaway's gonna call me. Let me give you guys a couple of the other names that are uh, on this list here. Jay Gruden. You, did I tell you guys about the? Um, did we talk about the Washington Redskins situation? Their GM has been like MIA for like a minute, and they tried to give like this bullcrap excuse as to why he wasn't at the combine. Um. His he's mourning his grandmother, his hundred year old grandmother's death. But they find out everybody else found out that she died like three weeks before then. And then Chris Cooley, uh, former Washington Redskins tight end, now works for Daniel Snyder, or he works at the radio station that Daniel Snyder owns. It was like, yeah, maybe homeboy is drinking again because he got like a drinking problem. He's a drunk, and everybody knew that when the Redskins brought him in. But he's like a again talent, talent wins. I should have. That's what I should have named this episode. Yeah, talent wins. So he's a he's a talented uh a talented evaluator. And so they brought him in. And now he's maybe he's falling off the wagon, but no one knows anything. And no one they they signed the players. Vern Davis got re signed. Kirk Cousins got uh, uh franchised again. And all of a sudden no one knows where the damn GM is. That's weird. You know what I mean? And I bring this up only to bring this up. And I meant to I meant to actually post this that Falcons fans here in the city of Atlanta, 
Falcons fans, understand what I said about two months ago when the Falcons were heading into the playoffs and everything looked up and up. To understand what you're about to go through this coming year. And it may not happen this year. You know what I mean? But you're you're in the same situation. You're still in you're in that kind of uh that fingers crossed situation with your offensive coordinator. Dudes are drunk. You know what I mean? There's a, there's no really other way to put it. I could probably put it nicer than that, but I won't. Because it is what it is. And if one day he just decides he's gonna fall off the wagon, yeah, you're screwed. When you start putting faith, and really you're putting the keys to the to the good car. Like the the defense is a fixer up here in Atlanta. That offense is ready rock off the lot. It's time to go punch it. And if the man you got behind the wheel is drunk, you're looking for problems, especially when you don't have an offensive head coach, by the way. So it ain't like, you know, he just take over the play calling like he did last year with the defense. Nah, this is pretty much Sarkeesian's show, man. And that's a, I don't know. It's a tall task for me, man. Like, the, the stuff that I said about, like, and then here's the difference if you're wondering, like, why is it different between this guy and Joe Mixon? Well, one, because he's a grown man, one. But two, Joe Mixon doing what he did two years ago is not something that will derail your football team. You know what I mean? Like, even if it happens, even if it happens again when he gets into the pros, it's not going to derail your football team. First of all, he's a running back. You just go get another one. You know, some guy's sitting there waiting in the wings to run the football anyway, so whatever. You know, you're already not drafting them high. So the 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 acknowledgement will be that you already have someone there. It's not going to derail anything. You just suspend him or to Josh Brown him and, and keep it moving. You know, commissioner's exemption list or whatever the hell it is. But the dude that's calling the plays on the best offense in the league in 2016 – he he ends up on a bender one night. Somebody forgot to check on him or something. Yeah, you're in trouble, man. You're in big trouble. Like, these folks around here want to have all this, like, faith and all this kind of stuff. I believe in the system and the process and all this kind of crazy stuff that everybody's saying now. You're an idiot. Yeah, I believe it when I see it. And then we'll... uh We'll move on. Before I go to break here, it's been an hour, and I ain't even, I ain't even introduced you guys to the put it on the poll questions. I screwed one of them up, though. I forgot to put hashtag, put it on the poll, but you can go to One Mike with Big Mike on Twitter and, and just go to my page, and you'll find it. Uh, we had a couple from last show up. Let me give you guys the one from today first. Um, it's very simple, man. It's Colin Kaepernick's NFL career over. Hashtag put it on the poll brought to us by Sports News and Brews. And, oh, my gosh, in the landslide, 100% so far are saying no, it's not. I think those are people that are just hopeful that it's not. Because I think there, there's more there's more of a chance than it is. If you've been reading and listening to the things that I've been listening to, that people still are, are like, people people still got their panties torn over this whole, that, that, that not standing for the pledge situation, man. And even though he said that, you know, he's, uh, he's going to stand from now on. I wouldn't be surprised, man, if people just waited to after the draft, see where everything falls, and then be like, all right, damn, I guess we will then. I guess we'll bring Colin in. You know what I mean? And it's a shame, but, you know, this is what happens, man. You work in a system where, you know, where you know, rich white men who want to feign patriotism, they run stuff. Whatever. Um, let me give you guys these final poll results from – uh, the other day, do you take your own snacks or candy to the movies? Uh, 86% said yes. Yes, they do. Yeah. People people, people who live the life I live, regular folks, who ain't got time to be paying $12 for a small popcorn, stale-ass popcorn. Um, are you okay? This is final as well. Are you okay with Colin Kaepernick making the decision to start standing for the national anthem? And 100% of people said yes for that. That is hashtag put it on the poll. It's brought to us by sportsnewsandbrews.com. I'm trying to get my guy uh, Rob Calloway on the phone so we can talk about uh, ATL, hashtag ATL orgy. Ugh. Ugh. In the meantime, in between time, and I'm not even no moralist, but like that's kind of bold. Just throw that out there like, yeah, we about to be freaking everywhere. I'm going to read the rest of these things he sent me during the break, man. It's the one Mike with Big Mike show. Yeah, I'll be back.
I have one question for you. Do you or someone you know run a business that could benefit from additional exposure? The One Mike with Big Mike show is currently taking on new sponsors and advertisers. One Mike with Big Mike is currently syndicated across eight different online platforms. And your company's name could be heard and seen across all eight as well. Let's get to work. Please send all inquiries to Mike at one Mike with Big Mike dot com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your continued support. All I need is one Mike. One Mike. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Time starts now. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Where can you find the answers to these questions? Car crashes are one of the leading killers of U.S. children. Many of those deaths could be prevented by making sure that kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. That's safercar.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. One mic. All I need is one mic. What's the name of the show? One Mike with Big Mike. You know, ain't nobody getting hurt, ain't nobody. You know, there's no, no crime being committed. And they say his style is too urban for the radio. This is real life stuff that's happened to me. Well, you know what? F- you, f- you, and f- you. One Mike with Big Mike. I like to be able to do what I want to do. A sports talk show. But no subject matter is off limits. Meek Mill's concert is not called the Hell Yeah, I Bang Khloe Kardashian concert. And now, your host. Put your hands together for the one. The only Big Mike. 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 Yes, it is. It is hump day right here on the One Mike with Big Mike show. Also, hashtag Woman Crush Wednesday. Our Woman Crush Wednesday for this week is at ish.com. C O M M I S H dot C O M M ish dot com. So you guys make sure you. Uh, shout out to her Give her a follow Or two or whatever You guys want to do With that situation um, I do have more information On this uh, Hashtag ATL orgy situation I didn't read the other The other parts Of the uh, the, the, the text I was sent um, So apparently uh, Nobody is obligated To do anything They don't want to do That's comforting I guess Um there will be security to give everyone an, that enhanced peace of mind. This is all about freedom and reconnecting to the car, to the carefree part of who you are. That's why this is a slumber party in a place where you can drink, dance. Uh, I can't F pass out, uh, then sleep in late. This seems like a, this seems like a, I don't know, man. Like maybe it's my age now that makes this seem like it's such a bad idea. You know, like twenty year old Mike is like, I gotta get in this. I find out where this is at. But like forty year old Mike is like, this is, I don't know. Um, the the party will be held in a super secret location where no cameras are allowed. Obviously, um. Only confirmed guests will get the address 48 hours from the party. They might need to tighten that up to like 24 hours or like eight hours, dude. Because people hey, people can't keep no secret. They're going to tell people. This is going to turn into a real crap show. Um, Here's what I can tell you about where it will be. It will be very homey, cozy, private, and spacious. So somebody's mansion. All right. Pricing for the event and a place to sleep. No payments are allowed at the door. Uh, advanced payments only. So they want your money up front because they know it's going to get shut down. <laughs> this, this is going to get shut down, dude. Um, we can, al- we can only allow these prices from March 8th, which is, oh, so it's today. Like pricing starts today to Sunday, March 12th for single ladies. You only got to pay a hundred bucks, 99, 99. I don't know why they wouldn't just put a hundred bucks. Like you don't get somebody a penny change back. For couples, you gotta pay 175 bucks. And for dudes, this is discrimination. For dudes, you gotta pay $175. 
yeah, this just doesn't sound like a good idea. Especially not in Atlanta. I mean, for a gamut of reasons. You know what I mean? Just be, I mean, like the AIDS population is out the window. Oh, gosh, man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Um, so anyway, I told you guys earlier about my man Marcus. My man, uh, my man Reggie. Helping out with the show. Appreciate you, Reggie. Uh, helping me out sharing the, uh, well, one of the things he's doing so far is helping me share the show with you guys while it's live. You know what I mean? Kind of, you know, getting me some more just live interactive type situation going on with the with the live stream going on right now on Facebook. Facebook.com backslash the number one M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. So today I put the fellas on the, on the group chat. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, look. All right, so I want to come up with some ideas on some things to do. Get some fresh ears, you know what I mean? Some, because I don't listen to the show, I don't listen to it afterwards. But to get some fresh ears on the show, I always think is a is a cool, I'm saying, cool thing to do. So I put the guys on the group chat, and just things just went awry very quickly because, like, I don't think Marcus has heard the show, but a couple of times, and so he doesn't realize that I don't do that thing that they do. (laughs) I mean, like. Would you draft Joe Mixon? Talent versus character. Like, I don't care. You know what I, mean? I kind of asked the question, but I asked it specifically to one person, you know, and, and had an exchange with one person. And I would have that exchange with anyone else, but I don't, I don't like premeditate them. You know, I just like, as I'm speaking, the same way you have a conversation with somebody. And that's kind of what, what the show is. It's about, you know, just, it's a dialogue, but I try to make it as conversational as possible. Um, what position do you? What position should Jabril Peppers play, and will he excel at the next level? Uh, he said he plays safety, and I don't know. See, that's why those questions don't work for me <laughs> because you know he's already proclaimed what position he plays, and no one knows if he'll excel at the, at the next level. Now, I did pose that quandary a while ago, not as to what position because, like I said, he said what position he played. I didn't pose the question in that way. I posed it as like. He seems to be one of those guys that has such a high floor and such a low ceiling. Like, I could see Jarrell Peppers out of the league in three years. As good a football player as I think he is, and I think he is an ultimate just plain old football player. But if he continues to be not defined in the way in which he's a a, a tweener or a positionless player, it's going to be tough, man. Or, or he just ends up being a punt returner, which would be a waste. You know what I mean? He's got so much football talent for that dude to be just just delegated to returning punts. That's that's a miss. So like I can see him being a, a you know four or five time Pro Bowler, or I can also see him a dude that's like a journeyman out of the league in a couple years. You know, one contract and done type guy, or one major con- one real contract being the rookie contract and done type of dude. You know, as you know, for for just for what he is, not for the type of athlete he is or the type of player, but because because we've seen plenty of great and good athletes, just, you know, kind of fizzle, you know, get into the league and not be, uh, uh sorry, be those guys. Um, let's see what else my man Marcus has for me. It was a bunch of stuff because he kept like every time I looked around, the damn the damn text message was going off, and it was some that was in the group chat, it was some that wasn't. It was weird, dude. But, you know, I got, uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, Can two possible head cases survive in New York? See, that's what I'm saying, dude. I don't, I don't consider either one of those dudes head cases. You know what I mean? For whatever that means. Or are they the best new duo in the NFL? OBJ and Brandon Marshall. Can Eli get it done? Would you want your franchise to pick AP? Adrian Peterson, whose nickname is AD, by the way. Uh, would you draft Joe Mixon with his, oh, with the episode he had with the young lady and so forth and so on? Yeah, that's cool and fine. That's like one of those. I used to work with a dude who was all about that kind of stuff. Like, let me just throw out this wacky sports question and then have people call me, give them the phone number. First segment of the show, too. <laughs> I've got nothing to say. You dudes do all the work and I'll get paid. Uh, nah. You know, I'd rather have conversation. Um, let's see what else I got. The other thing that happened last night uh, the, in the NBA, Russ, my man Russ went off. I saw the beginning of the game, and no one was missing the shot. Like I think, was it the was it the 
the, the Thunder. The Thunder played the, the Trailblazers, but one of the teams was shooting like 70% after the first quarter. I was like, come on, this guy stop. <laughs> I mean, this can't be a thing. But the what what's come from that is what happens at this time of the season in the NBA, post All Star break, heading towards the playoffs. It's a time where, where everything gets magnified and then the news about things are so much bigger and and so so profound. Like Kevin Durant gets hurt. Oh my God. Charles Barkley <laughs> why am I doing this? Charles Barkley says, um, idiotically, with Kevin Durant being hurt, the Warriors have a zero percent chance of winning an NBA title. And even Kenny was like, zero dog? Like you want that's what you're doing? Zero? Like it, even his even his coworkers like that's stupid as hell for you to say that, but that's the thing that happens. You blow it up to be you don't you don't know what's happening. You haven't seen what's going to happen. Yeah, they've struggled a little bit since he's been. They, they lost two in a row for the first time in a year, I think. The other day, trying to get used to him not being there and playing, you know, the way they played last year without him. Okay, fine, and then I think there'll be another readjustment period once he gets back. Once they rescan him in a couple of weeks and they see if he's ready to go and if, or if they hold him out to the playoffs, whatever. You know, there'll be a, another readjustment period. But to be like, they don't have a chance. That's hyperbolic. Of course they do. They're the number one seed in the West. Of course they've got a chance. We saw this, We saw two series last last year change on a dime. When, when, when Golden State had no chance of winning the Western Conference Finals, they were down 3-1, and guess what happened? And then when the Cavs had no chance of winning the, the, the NBA uh, uh, championship, down 3-1. And guess what happened? Yeah, spoiler alert. Warriors won, Cavs won. Uh, Cavs won. You know, then, you know, the Cavs, even my man, Jovan Buha, ESPN, they signed Darren Williams and, and, and uh, Timothy Mozgov. Is it Timothy Mozgov? Yeah, whatever. I'll go with Timothy Mozgov. And he said that makes them the, the, the prohibited favorite at this point. Head and shoulders favorite to win the championship. And in 58 seconds in the game, Mozgov breaks his damn leg. See what I'm saying? Life happens. That's why I don't do predictions and all that kind of stuff because no one could predict Timmy from Mozgov playing less than a minute and breaking his damn leg and being out for the season. After he left $2.5 million on the table. Could have gone to another good team, the Houston Rockets. I think wanted them, and they had a two, they had a three million dollar exemption exemption for him sitting on the table. The Cavs only had a four hundred thousand dollar exemption. He took the four hundred and left the three. <laughs> yeah, I went to public school, cause but even I know that's bad math, cause <laughs> that's terrible math. And they now to compound it with the fact that your leg is broken, you can't play no more. And then and then Kawhi the other night, Kawhi Leonard did some, I don't know, Kawhi just. Some Kawhi stuff, man. Hit a big three at the end of the game. Uh, was checking James Harden down the stretch, locked him down. Final play of the game, James Harden gets to the rack. Here comes this this animal of a human being, Kawhi Leonard, who probably got basement bodies in the basement. You know what I mean? I'm going to keep saying that. But whatever. Blocks the shot, gets the rebound. Like the whole package was on display, man. And now all of a sudden, there's your MVP right there. Slow down. Just let it happen. You know what I mean? You know, Russ can't be the MVP because he scored 58 last night and the team lost. Well, that says more about them than it does him. He shot the ball at 54%. Even though he lost, he he, he missed like four straight shots coming down the stretch. That's 58 points, man. You can't win when your best player gets 58 points. I don't know if that's on him, man. Nine assists. I don't know what the turnover number is. That number seems to be high all season. So, like, a lot of those, a lot of those triple doubles Russ has gotten really been quadruple doubles. <laughs> I mean, because of the turnover has been so damn high. Um, and then Kawhi Leonard, back to him real quick. Yeah, homie got drug tested, like, right after the game. Like, random drug testing. They was like, no human being could do that on his own merit. Hell no. You got to go down. Um, I had something I wanted you guys to hear, too. So, down here at Atlanta, there's a, there's a hockey team now. That's the thing that's going on. There's a, there's an, I don't know if it's an MLS team. I know a couple of years ago, my man Alex, Alec Campbell was really, you know, trying to get me up to speed on this hockey team. I'm um, hockey, sorry, soccer team uh, coming to the city. I didn't really pay him a lot of attention. Ah oh, man, I don't know where I put it at. I had this this sound from earlier that is so totally ridiculous and funny. <laughs> this chant is apparently they had a, a anti gay chant going on, and the word that you puto. 
Puto is is um I don't know what it means because the the article I was reading didn't it didn't specify what it was or what it meant. But apparently, it means it's it's a it's a slur. You're not supposed to say it and whatnot. And I don't know where the hell I save that damn article. That damn that damn sound. It's it's so freaking hilarious. I thought I I thought I had just put it into the damn to where I put all my sound at, but apparently not. You guys lose out. Sorry. Um, I'm get ready to get ready to wrap this show up, man. Because as you guys can probably hear, I'm running out of stuff to talk about. I talked about the Nike situation. Oh, what I didn't talk about yesterday was uh, USA Soccer has now mandated that its players uh, stand for the national anthem. Megan Rapino, you remember her last year, the the uh, the homosexual young lady who who stood or not stood, but she knelt in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick. Well, they did a bunch of like petty stuff with her um, playing the national anthem before they came out, before the teams came out. All this kind of petty stuff, man, to keep her from kneeling because it was an embarrassment. No more embarrassing than than not recognizing somebody's rights, I presume, right? Ridiculously stupid, man. Like Stupidity is just running rampant. Your man Donald Trump is still holding steadfast that 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 a man that that your man Barry was 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 freaking uh was bugging his phone tapping his his wires or whatever the hell he said man it's just ridiculous oh before I do leave fellas I got to introduce you guys uh and girls yeah everybody I got with especially since we got ATL orgy hashtag ATL orgy happening there is a smart condom the real thing. Uh, <laughs> you ever wonder how many calories you're burning in the bedroom? The i.con condom, which keeps track of your sex stats, <laughs> could be your answer. Uh, yes, it's a smart condom. The same, it's like a Fitbit for your junk. Uh, it's, it's described as a discreet, lightweight ring currently hidden inside a black box. So it's essentially, it's not a condom. It has a, it's like, it makes it look like it's a condom, but it's not. It's a, um, yeah, I guess I just call it a penis ring <laughs> is what it is. You know what I mean? I'm such a child. I can't even do this without, <laughs> without breaking a smile. And it, it tracks your, uh, your calories that you burn. Uh, what else? Uh, how many pumps, how long you've lasted, uh, like your girth tracks all that. And then you can hook it up. You charge it by the USB, <laughs> and then you also hook it up to your situation, and and you can like share <laughs> you can share your stats, dude. Like, look at me, dog. I was killing it, dog. Four thousand eighty-two, four thousand eight hundred and eighty-two pumps. <laughs> yeah, got my workout in for the day. Um, yeah, how many thrusts? Speed. Oh, the speed of your thrust too. That's another one. So, like, if you like. If you like going jackhammer style, it'll pick it up. Or if you just like long, you know, yeah, <laughs> the eye condom. Yeah. Birthday coming up, man. March 28th. I'll let your boy. <laughs> nah, man, I'm, I'm being silly. Um, anyway, what is this fool saying? No WCW today? Yeah, there is a WCW today. I am no dose. Her name is at ish dot com. I S H dot C O M M. So go check her out, you pervy bastard. <laughs> um uh, is that all I have today? I think it is, man. I think I get get out. Oh, did I already mention Underground tonight? Make sure y'all check out Underground. WGN channel, man. If you don't if you don't see it, make sure you uh dvr it or whatever i keep it on dvr just in case I'm, I'm about to miss it uh and finally the last thing for today out of the ncaa two things actually and one of them didn't come up on my sheet here but this kid josh something or the other what is this kid's name i told you guys a little bit about him the other day he's the kid josh jackson he's being suspended by the university or by kansas university for the the beginning of the big 12 tournament the opener big 12 one game suspension for some traffic violations Here's the crazy part about this. This is the kid who who caused $3,000 worth, worth of damage to a, a chick's car. 
because apparently she threw a drink in his face. Now, they, quote unquote, said they handled it internally. He didn't miss any games because I think they were about to play North Carolina that week or something, too. But they didn't miss any games. But the girl, she's on the girls basketball team. She got suspended. And the reason being is because what she did was in public and what he did was in private. Yeah, that sounds like a terrible message to send. Terrible, horrible, stupid message to send. And uh, in the same world of the NCAA, they're claiming broke again. So the NCAA, apparently, they raked in about a billion dollars last year. And the book in the books uh, show a loss of four hundred million in twenty sixteen. Now you say, how can that be? Um, they took it to be exact nine hundred ninety six million dollars, but you know who's counting? Um, and still, like I said, meant, lost like four hundred million in twenty sixteen. In the twenty sixteen fiscal year, they saw the NCAA spend one point four billion dollars, uh, nearly half a billion increase from twenty fifteen. Sounds like the money's coming in. You spending half a billion dollars more. This is one of those things that people do, man. Because like, I don't know if you guys understand this. the The NCAA is uh, what it CP five hundred three nonprofit, so they have to show a loss. They have to show like either no profit or a loss. So they'll find ways to to stash the money or to get rid of the money to act like so they can they can holler broke all in the name of amateurism, unpaid labor. In some in some corners of the earth, they call it slavery, but we'll we'll keep it above board for the day. Um, the nineteen the nine hundred ninety six million is an eighty four million dollar jump from twenty fourteen, but that came at the heels of a seventy six million dollar decline in twenty fourteen. Hmm. Uh, the NCAA reserves are now down to two hundred ninety six million dollars, the lowest mark in eleven years. The five hundred dollar, the five hundred million dollar increase in expenses came from a one time distribution to member schools of uh, two hundred million dollars in March, a two hundred million dollar lawsuit settlement settlement proposal in two in November, a payment of forty two million to lawyers in association with guess what the Ed O'Bannon case, the case that said you probably need to pay these players because they're doing all the work and you're marketing them and you're using their, likeness, their likenesses and their faces on video games and all this kind of stuff. So instead of paying that money to the players, they spent $42 million at least defending why they shouldn't pay them. So you got money to burn, just not money to pay your labor. And another $25 million jump in outside legal expenses. So there's 42 for the for the O'Bannon case itself, but then another 25 million for other legal. The lawyers got rich. If you're a lawyer for the NCAA, shout out to you, man. That's yeah, that's 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 good money. That's good work if you can get it. All right, that's gonna do it, man. I'm about to go watch some of this college basketball. I got the Detroit Pistons and the Indianapolis and the Indiana Pacers on my TV right now. I'm about to go get caught up from a whole preseason that I missed of of college basketball and try to get things rocking. I got a, I got a bracket to fill out too. My, my, my guys from um, baseline to goal line sports sent me a bracket. Guess I got to fill that out and figure something. I got to call my guy Deshaun too. So he, so he can give me all the teams I need to put on there. But anyway, that's going to do it, man. Uh, the hump day edition of the one Mike with big Mike show. Also hashtag women crush Wednesday. I'm um, heard live every Monday, Wednesday and Friday here on Spreaker, the app for Spreaker tune in as well as the one Mike with big Mike.com. Website, shout out to my man. I am don't I am no those. Reggie, what up? Everybody who checked in on Facebook. The show can also be heard on demand. Uh afterwards on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play Music, uh, YouTube, and of course the platforms that I've already mentioned. Uh the the Facebook live stream stays up on my Facebook page, One Mike with Big Mike. And make sure you head on over to my Twitter and my Instagram. Same handle, one Mike with Big Mike. Let me start this music real quick. So until Friday. I got to get my email situation straightened out, man, so I can get some guests back on the show. I know you guys are tired of just hearing my 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 crazy voice. And also, man, I'm tired of doing all this damn talking, man. Oops, I understand. Somebody talk too. My man Callaway ain't called me. I wanted to mess around with this damn ATL. Y'all be safe out here too, man. Y'all be safe. If y'all trying to participate in this ATL or hashtag ATL orgy, be safe, man. Get you a uh, don't just get you a, a smart condom. Yeah, get you a smart condom. Be smart and wear condoms. 
Please believe that. We don't need no more folks to run around here with this age, man. That's why I said the other day, man. It feels like it feels like no one cares anymore about about age. Like we was young, man. It was like you gonna die? I ain't trying to die. Nah, I was like, whatever. Magic ruined the game for everybody. Everybody feel like because Magic be days, I can do it too. All right, Kanye said that. I could I could live through anything if Magic made it. All right, keep believing that if you want to. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you guys back here, same time, same place. 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. Right here on Spreaker.com. It's the One Mike's Big Mike Show.